Hello, my A peoples. Um, so we are gonna hit some like respiration today, and there's a lot of different types of respiration. Um, so there's no way I can fit all of cellular respiration, which is what you really need to know for the exam, um, into one video. So I'm gonna do kind of like a preview intro video. It'll be really short. It's this one that you're watching right now, and then we will do cellular respiration in a separate video on down the slides. So um first thing with like respiration is that heterotrophs are different than autotrophs that's pretty obvious and the name is even different um to be a heterotroph you have to obtain energy um you can't make your own energy um so like what we saw in photosynthesis where plants were um making glucose to then break down uh and use during cellular respiration this is that piece of heterotrophs can't make their own so they've got to obtain it. Um, and what they're obtaining is that glucose um, that plants are just able to make for themselves or autotrophs are just able to make for themselves. Um, so the general idea is that we have glucose, which is this carbon compound, if we remember our macromolecules. Um, it's a carbohydrate because uh, it ends in that O's. Uh, it's entering a cell. It's going through this stage of glycolysis. And then two big things can happen. Um, one, uh, there can be O2 present, which is just oxygen, um, and in that case, it's going to enter a mitochondria, uh, it's going to go through the citric acid cycle, it's going to go through the electron transport chain, it's going to give us a lot of um, energy. We'll learn all that other stuff a little bit later. Um, the other option is that there's no oxygen presence, and you'll kind of see like this drought right here, with no oxygen present, um, it's way less efficient. It's going to have this byproduct of ethanol or lactic acid, um, depending on what type of cell it is. Um, and that's how we're going to have to make energy. Now, when we say we're making energy, a cell's major form of energy is ATP. Um, so we're making ATP by breaking down this glucose. So um, how does this process actually happen? Well, we have these electron acceptors, which we talked on a little bit about um, when we got into photosynthesis, because electron acceptors are in photosynthesis as well. Um, but what their job and their role is, is that they can capture energy and transport energy very effectively. Um, you know, we love electron acceptors because the more electron acceptors we have, the more energy we can transport and the more energy we can um, move around in this process. Um, so when we were in photosynthesis, we were talking about NADP plus, and NADP plus picked up that hydrogen, if we remember correctly. Um, the same role of being an electron acceptor and picking up that hydrogen um, in respiration is oxygen. Oxygen does that for us. And because we are using oxygen as the electron acceptor, we call this a redox reaction. Um, these are chemical reactions, you may have remembered this from chemistry, that transfer electrons, um, and they are oxidation reduction reactions. Um, so that's kind of a chemistry connection there um, that we're going to be looking at. This is a redox reaction. And so our redox reaction, I'll move my face, okay? Um, our redox reaction, we've got um, an electron moving from one thing to the next, and this little guy is being reduced because it's picking up that electron um, and becoming more negative. Uh, when I was in school, I learned oil rig, um, O-I-L. Oxidation is loss because um, we are, you know, losing electrons. So we saw this guy lose the electron and he's oxidized versus reduction is gained, that rig part, oil rig, um, where we gain an electron. Even though it's being reduced, we're gaining an electron, which will make it more negative. All right, so we've got um, a quick reminder about this being like a catabolic pathway. Um, remember, catabolic is break. Um, catabolic is a release of energy. Um, and we're using these catabolic pathways because we are breaking glucose to make ATP. Um, these are coupled reactions always. Um, because we're breaking that glucose to then store it in the bonds of ATP. Um, so you can see that coupling process. Um, these are 
a lot of um, different ways to actually make this ATP. And we talked about how if we have oxygen, that's aerobic respiration, that's right there in the middle. Um, and that's the most efficient way um, that eukaryotes can make um, ATP energy, which is what they need for their cell. Uh, there's also fermentation, which is what we saw with the byproducts of lactic acid and ethanol. It's outside of the mitochondria. There's no oxygen present, um, and there's going to be a potentially hazardous uh, byproduct that pops up. And then we've got anaerobic respiration. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot similar to uh, aerobic respiration. The only thing is, um, we're not going to use oxygen as our uh, electron acceptor. So there's a different uh, process that kind of goes through, but it is very similar to aerobic respiration. It actually can even enter the mitochondria at times. Um, it just isn't going to use oxygen. Therefore, it's going to be a little less efficient. All right, so we're going to hit cellular respiration in the next video, but I just wanted to kind of introduce you uh, to some of the concepts that we were going to be talking about. I will see you later.